boys are back for your brains. Welcome to the pod, people. I am trash, Matisse Van Rossum. I'm someone who's wondering if I've ever uh, dreamed about being dead before. Uh, Cleveland Mosier. I'm a hysterical old man, Ben Sheets. And today we're joined by a very special guest, John Ostrom. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you for uh, joining us, and uh, you are actually the curator of today's episode. You wanted to be on the show and suggested that we watch Return of the Living Dead. We're here to talk about that. As the guest, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about Return of the Living Dead and uh, why you uh, why you like this movie so much? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, uh, I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in 84. So, like, 80s horror movies are, like, my, my jam. Like, that's what I do. That's what I get into. And I have, like very specific memories of seeing Return of the Living Dead, even as a child, just being introduced to it. And ever since then, I've just been obsessed with it. Just the creature design, the comedy that goes into it. I love comedy in my horror films. So like mixing of those two has been perfect. Uh, And that was like, I think when I discovered comedy and horror was Return of the Living Dead. Uh, Growing up seeing like Alien and Terminator and just like all the awesome 80s horror stuff that I loved. And now all of a sudden there's something that made me laugh as well as had brains spilling out of skulls. You know, it was like, it was right up my alley, even as a six-year-old. Well, uh, drawing the comparison to, uh, or met, rather mentioning Alien is uh, is a good segue because this film is written and directed by Dan O'Bannon, who wrote the screenplay for the original Alien. Oh, shit. Um, and, uh, yeah, I Dan O'Bannon's filmography is relatively small, but uh, I love all of his shit. And yeah. This was my yeah. first time seeing this movie all the way through, uh, growing up and like getting into horror, uh, I've seen so many scenes and clips from this movie because it is such like a part of the the culture of horror of the '80s. I I always thought it looked fascinating, and somehow I never got around to watching it. So this is my first time seeing it. The the text. writing yeah. of this movie is incredible. Oh yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. This is a comedy horror film that's not funny because it's bad, unlike so many other horror films of, of the 80s and, and 90s that you can laugh at because they're they're just dog shit movies. Yeah, but... it's less laughing at, like, the camp elements of it. Like, it's less because it's over the top, but more because, like, it's actually funny. Yeah, it, it's setups <laughs> and punchlines. It's just that the setups and punchlines are actually good yeah. for once. It's and like, yeah, it's a, it, such a relief. The script is legitimately witty. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and the editing helps with that and, a lot. Like they yeah. they take some plays at meta, which which a lot of the times in horror movies can can detract. Uh, like well, like the, when I like how much I hated Ginger Dead Man Two when we watched it. Like <laughs> like one of the worst plays at meta I've ever yeah. seen. But like this film plays at meta a bunch and it does it so well. Well we should mention that because like uh they talk about Night of the Living Dead explicitly in this movie, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Because um, in, in this world it exists as a film. Which right. is great. Yeah. Well the the idea is uh Romero had to falsify a lot of the information because it was actually based on a true story. This uh, chemical from the Darrow Institute uh, <laughs> yeah, Company yeah. Corporation yeah. Uh, made this this gas. I don't remember what it's called. Um, spooky some gas. sort of yeah, spooky yeah. gas. Zombie gas. Yeah. And, Zero yeah, five it, seven twelve. <laughs> yeah, right. it, yeah, it essentially <laughs> reanimates uh, the dead. And uh, they, it was unleashed, and they had to contain it. Contain it, and due to some sort of military fuck up, it ended up a, in the a basement. clerical error. Yeah, <laughs> ended up in the basement of this morgue so, of a uh, medical medical supply uh, distributor. Yes, where our, our hapless our hapless protagonists are uh, stationed. I remember hearing something about uh, how this film was titled. I may not be remembering it entirely correctly, but I think that somebody other than Romero owned the rights to the of the dead of the living dead. That's uh, correct, yeah. Yeah, if you know more it about was, that, please. It was uh, John Russo, I believe is his name. He he wrote Night of the Living Dead, uh, and they wanted to make a sequel to it. And that's kind of like where it split off, if I recall correctly. Uh, and John Russo wanted to make like this kind of send-up horror comedy, and Romero wanted to do his serious sequel, right. which ended up being Dawn of the Dead. We sure. know what that is. But they ended up wanting to do like this, this kind of meta-horror comedy sequel. 
Uh, and then Russo took that and made it Return of the Living Dead. Uh, and that's where, like, it almost becomes, like, a life of its own. It became, like, its own movie, even though it's almost, in a way, set in the same kind of world in Night of the Living Dead, the real world of Night right, of the Living yeah. Dead. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I, I've heard about Russo, like, having his own cuts of Night of the Living Dead where he's re-edited the footage. Yeah, I've heard about that, too. And it's not... Great. They in yeah. or whatever. <laughs> several years ago they released his cut, if I'm not mistaken. Is that the one that starts with like there's like a coffin in the beginning? Like they reshot stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Edition where they yep, added yep. new footage. Yep. They the they, they George fit. Lucas did. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. they George <laughs> Lucas did. And I if I I haven't seen his cut, but if I if I recall the anecdote correctly. They got some of the same actors, but like thirty years after the fact. So they put them in makeup to try to make them look younger, but they're clearly like thirty years older than they were in the Whoa. original movie. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, that's rough. It's not good. <laughs> it's that's a bad really look. not good. There's this awful scene in the beginning, and I only saw this this version once, and it was probably like fifteen years ago, fifteen twenty years ago. And there's a, there's a shot in the beginning of the movie. It opens with this shot of like. There's a coffin outside of, I guess it's like a cemetery, mausoleum, you know, whatever, uh, funeral home type place. Uh, and they open it up and like the little girl on the inside is still alive and she bites one of like the caretakers and like, that's how they explain it all starts from there. But that's the right. That's the, the zombie that's wandering around the cemetery yes. at the beginning. Yeah. That That's right. That's the actor. It's the same actor that they got and they put the, the really bad makeup on him. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and like that, that the beginning shot, it's shot so clean and it's shot as if it was, I mean, I don't know when it was. I'm just going to like spitball and say 2001 that they shot this compared to what, 1968. Yeah. That yeah. the original yeah. was made. So it's yeah. like, and they just, just put a black and white filter exactly. over it. Oh, yeah. So like, it's so all of a sudden, disparate. it's so jarring going from this yeah. really clean, like digital black and white shot to all of a sudden the super grainy old, like I don't even know if it's sixteen millimeter film footage, and it's just like, it's certainly. so jarring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I love the original Night of the Living Dead too. So the the, the fact that they would like despoil such a classic film by like trying to shoot new scenes for it, like. 30 something years later. Yeah, That's well, insane. I'm happy it uh kind of morphed into this movie. Yes. Yeah. This is much better like <laughs> yes. Night of the Living Dead is amazing for what it is. Set it aside if you you want to make a a more meta referential horror comedy, this is the way to do it. And I mean, giving it to Dan O'Bannon is also a really good choice. <laughs> well, yeah, because he like takes the ethos and the inspiration from night of the living dead and kind of changes the idea of what zombies are fundamentally and i think at its core that's what works the best out of this 100%. oh yeah no, like, like uh, subvert uh, subverting the expectation yeah of, because of what we're zombie, so used to zombies. you know zombies that you know, you just destroy their head. Yeah. Right. And like them. in or every film, we, we have to deal with you know? like the, the main characters discovering what zombies are and having to learn that lesson. Whereas in this case, like we get the characters, they've seen the movies, they know what happens. And, uh, so we get to, we get to be on the same like point of knowledge as they are. Right. But I love, and, I absolutely love that. But then they learn that the, what they know about the zombie lore based on the movies is it's not wrong. true. Is not true. <laughs> It's one of my favorite interpretations of zombies, honestly. Same. The idea that they're semi-intelligent enough to, you know, call for backup paramedics To speak or and, to, and to plan. Yeah. And, yeah, and to do stuff like that. And as we were talking about before the show, this is the first film that introduced the zombie trope of being hungry for brains. Correct. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. This know. is this is the origin of the shambling brains. It's so zombies. brilliant in this movie yeah. too because they set it up with that rigor mortis speech. Um, right. Well, that's that's the, the thing is that I didn't brain, that I didn't right? realize mm -hmm. is that or what I like about this movie is that this film has reason for the zombies eating brains. Everything that comes after this, like we know that zombies eat brains, it's become a part of the pop culture, but why do they eat brains? For no reason, except in this movie, because they need the the fluid in the brain 
so that they don't feel the pain of being dead because being dead is painful. Well, and the way they reveal that is so great too because like in lesser movies, it would feel like exposition yeah. revealing the reasoning for stuff like that. But in this movie, you know, they they have tied a corpse to the table to try to examine it. Oh, yeah. And it freeze frames like right on the little lever that's moving its <laughs> mouth. It's just like... It's it's charming, you know. It it it's one of the few effects in this movie that I think doesn't hold up. But other than that, like the practicals are, they're so incredible. Are amazing. Yeah. yeah, like the the Shaman that was still in the the, the tar and yeah. doing the opening credits with like the dolphin face was awesome. Yeah, like, yeah. I love yeah, that, that was incredible. Like, and then you had to like have it come back, and it's like doing the brains thing and like the walk, and I just love like how ooey and gooey the way it is he moves the drips. too. He's yeah. so like lanky and uh and just the wrong amount of flesh still on him like, <laughs> like yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Like, that that tar man character is just like i think one of the most iconic zombie characters from yeah. the 80s you know you think of like him and the like bub from day of the dead you know those yeah, are like exactly. the two zombies i think mm-hmm. of if you think of like a great 80s zombie character right yeah. and like so many films like and uh zombie movies just get that wrong and they have like just the same like shambling corpses every time and even the runners like they all look the same like this movie has so much personality like it's so character driven from not just the protagonist but also like for the the zombie villains like even the horde like outside like you see those individuals that are like calling the cops you know to bring more yep. yeah you know and, more and, more like, like, that's why every zombie sense. has yeah. personality in this <laughs> that's film. why i love that they're semi-intelligent because they're not just just you know faceless lifeless the scene at the towards the end where like all of the cops show up to the morgue and there's the one zombie cop like dressed as a cop with like directing them in with the flashlight (laughs) that's so funny i yeah i love the uh i love the semi-intelligent zombies that they're you know they're just smart enough to like hatch little schemes to get more brains to them right they have the, the ability to call more cops in and hide yeah, exactly. <laughs> the cops show up and they all pop out at the same time. Yeah, yeah and it's great. The, the amount of times that that exact plan works, how many times in the movie they just call for backup and then hide, wait till the backup shows up and then just jump <laughs> yeah. out and do it all over again is so funny. Oh my god, when uh, the zombies just straight up spear the paramedics. Yeah, yeah I was wondering if like, a person was actually hurt during that scene, like... Like, jeez, that guy gets, like, fucking knocked down, <laughs> yeah. like, hard. Uh, apparently, um, going back to the effects a little bit, sure. some of, the, some of the, the zombie actors were eating real raw calf's brain uh in the uh in some of those scenes That's where they're dedication, like man like, uh, well no, apparently uh apparently Dan O'Bannon on set you know, gave a speech to his cast and crew is like, look, I wouldn't ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. And just like took a handful of calf's brain and just ate it on set in front of the other people. And it's like, I'll pay you more if you eat the calf's brains. You don't have to, Holy but shit. like I said, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't that. make you do it if I wouldn't do it myself. And so he did it, you know, just on set. It's like anybody who wants to do it, you'll get a little bump to your paycheck. You have people eating real brains in this movie. My jaw's open, like holy shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's great. Crazy. It's dedication, yeah. and I, it looks it looks incredible. You know, like that's part of the reason the effects hold up so well. I mean, it all would have been boiled, like it would have been sanitized and whatnot. I suppose, like Jesus Christ, like that's yeah. awesome. That it's is like, dedica- dedication. It's the only job you could think of where you get a bonus for eating brains. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I mean, it it sounds really gross, but. Fuck, if I was a zombie extra in, on this movie, I might have done it. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's like, if... Yeah, you're already there. You're gonna... And, and also, <laughs> yeah. if you're gonna be willing to eat the actual brains, you're gonna get more screen time Damn as right. a zombie. Oh, so yeah. you get to be on camera more, and you can say that, yeah, I ate real brains for Return of the Living Dead. Like, you'll have a story... It's probably disgusting, but you got a story that you can tell forever, man. Exactly. And you can, you know, when your kids are old enough to watch this, you can say, that's that's daddy right there, eating those, <laughs> eating real brains. <laughs> One of the other effects that I really like, I think it is very corny, but the uh, the first zombie they deal with, the yellow zombie that they have locked in the freezer, <laughs> when they, like, 
cut his head off and you can tell that it's just like a big rubber torso with somebody's arms behind it just like moving around it looks so funny i love it oh yeah and then too like right beforehand when they have like the like the the split like dog like the yeah. bisected dogs like for for uh like surgical studies and like anatomy stuff like like when it's on the ground like it's a really cheap puppet and then it, like it cuts back to him like oh we have to kill the abomination oh shit and he's like s- like he's just like he has like a rubber bat and he's just like smacking a like crutch. a rubber yeah and he's just like smacking this like rubber doll and it, it's great it's absolutely well, great. The, like, like the, that actor is is amazing well um, more about him later but yeah the uh the um just like the attention to detail with stuff like that with like the split dog um and like when they're dealing with the yellow zombie and you have sort of like out of focus in the side of the frame the the, uh, the pinned butterflies yep. that are still like moving like the gas is reanimating all things that were alive and that's the kind of thing that like it's not necessary by any means to the story but it's just a, a wonderful extra touch of world building that makes this world feel more like fleshed out, which I think is always excellent. And Dan O'Bannon is really good at attention to detail yeah. and his world building and stuff. So uh, I'm not surprised. Man, just all of the little details of how they set that stuff up feel so organic when they do. You know, he's just showing this guy around the, the facility. Oh, yeah. And, and one by one things come out. The and yeah, like like to to yeah, like pull back to the the very beginning of the film. The intro scene plays out over a good like five to eight minutes of like just like this this old like warehouse like worker like showing the the new young hire around, and he show we get a full tour of this like uh this warehouse. And, uh, like, they're just having long conversations throughout the whole thing. And when it first started, I was very concerned. I was like, oh, man, like, here comes another, like, zombie movie with, like, like with like bland acting. And there's just going to be a lot of dialogue. And I'm about to sit through all of it. And immediately, I was just so taken by this old guy. Like, his character is, he, he's such a great little character actor. Like, it's, he's just so, he just dives headfirst into, like, into, like, bad acting and it, i love it like the dialogue so, hamming is it so up, great. Hamming it up yeah. so much yeah. yeah all of the characters are great most there i think there are a couple of sort of throwaway characters more like just a couple of the the, the gang of punks like that don't get that much uh screen time or development yeah. but i'd say like all of the other characters like you've got so many excellent characters the old guy frank and freddie the the guy who's the new kid who's working at the warehouse and ernie the mortician he's probably my favorite i love him he's so <laughs> extra he's always walking around strapped <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's so quick on the trigger apparently um, he was originally uh his character was written to be like a uh a Nazi uh, war doctor who had escaped and he was in hiding. Well, considering his name, when they they say it, it's yeah, like... he's he's got a very German name, yeah. um, and uh, he speaks German a couple of times, and he has a like a it's a German pistol, like a yeah, yeah. Like, like a yeah. Luger, yeah. yeah, yeah. His he has a Luger, and uh, apparently there's also a framed photo of Ava Braun in the morgue. Whoa. I I missed that. <laughs> Um, and oh then, no, I know what you're talking about. I didn't realize, but yeah, there is like a there are some some framed photos. And they uh, wow, yeah. So apparently that that character was just designed to be like a Nazi war criminal who had like escaped to the states after the war and was in hiding. And they just cut that plot point out of the movie, but all of those little details that they put in are wow. still there. It's amazing, which is pretty funny. From what I've that. heard, uh, with the effects, going back to that just for a second, sure. uh, apparently they had one effects guy in the original cut of the movie who did a really awful job. <laughs> like, the effects looked really just awful. Oh, really? Like, rubber, just Did he do the yellow amateur. zombie? He did. Okay, that he would did. make sense. That's um, why it looks so much worse than all of the other zombies. But they, they recut all of his stuff, and you can still see bits and pieces of that stuff in the movie. It's just so fascinating because... Um, I've seen a little bit of behind the scenes of this movie, and that stuff, it looks like just 
high school play production level, <laughs> you know, yeah. that, you know. Really low budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just For a zombie scenes. film, too, like, why would you ever hire somebody like that? Like, it makes me wonder, like, what, what had he done before this movie that he was able to con them into letting him on the set to do, to do the work, though? Because you'd think that creating a zombie film, you would make sure, you'd make damn sure that you get somebody who is a good effects artist. You'd be looking for, like, a Tom Savini or something. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't be surprised if the person just thought that, like, because they'd already been hired, like, they they had the job security of, like, sticking around on the film and didn't give a shit for that reason. That's That would be my theory, you know? And Could be. Guess, Somebody who's young not. and lazy. And... Yeah, <laughs> almost yeah. certainly. Well, the, the choice to uh, hire somebody new and go around all of that stuff, thank God they did. Yeah. yeah. Because all... all Aside from, like, the yellow zombie and the the skeleton with the little moving jaw and the eyeballs, like, the rest of the effects hold up very, very well. And even that effect is great. Like, yeah, it's, I love it's it. fun. It's fun. Exactly. Like, it, it doesn't bother me in the context of the film. Yeah, no, the effects are so incredible. Again, Tar Man is so iconic. Like... It's just incredible. The other zombie I really like is the Linnea Quigley one. Yes. Uh, yeah. Where, uh, you know, <laughs> she's just naked and, like, monstrous. She's still wearing the yeah. leg warmers. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, like so her, 80s. Her whole character arc is, is worth, I think, worth getting into. Yeah. Like, I, I adored, I adored <laughs> that sequence. Like... Uh, well, her can, character's name is Trash, trash. first yeah. of all. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just like <laughs> shitty gutter punks with like red hair and face tattoos or weird shitty face makeup and stuff. And like when the, the gutter punks go into the cemetery for reasons, uh, she's like sitting down. She's well, just yeah, because like, they're, they're punks. Like, like um, just imagine like like how great it would be to get killed like and ripped apart by a bunch of like old dead dudes or whatever. Like that whole sequence was great. And she gets like really turned on like talking about getting killed, like getting offed. And uh like, I, lo I love it too, because, like, during that, like, her whole monologue about that, she starts stripping, and you just hear one of the gutter punks in the background just like, oh, she's doing it again! <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's great, that's such a nice detail, because after that, like, she gets completely naked except for her leg warmers and just starts, like, dancing on top of, like, a mausoleum. Yeah, having the guy in the background is like, oh, she's doing it again! It's like, Perfect. how often do they have to deal with her doing this? <laughs> like, I, I love it too, because, like, it's a fun like stereotype for that character like all the gutter punks they say like all like the perfectly like the perfect stereotype things yeah, to say totally and it's always it, and it's it's so hemmed and played up that you know it's it's always appreciated there's such a weird like fun group of characters because you've got her you've got the leader whose name is suicide mm -hmm. uh <laughs> yeah. with the with the uh all the chains with the well yeah he's got the convertible that just has like suicide spray painted on who the cares front, <laughs> and like death on and he's uh bashed out all of the windows of his car just because and he's just covered in chains and shit like that and he's got like the weird like x shaved into the back of his head and then also in the same group you have like the one guy who's just like dressed like buddy holly yeah like the guy in the suit with the boom box yeah like yeah, yeah it was it was all of like the it was the perfect little like 80s like gutter punk gang trope and right. it they, they did it so well like right like the first shot you just see them walking down the street like you know, cussing each other out. And well, they're shit. driving. Just like, they're, yes, yeah. bring them to me. Like, <laughs> hell yeah. Like, this and there's is like I'm seven of them crammed into mm -hmm. that car too. Oh yeah, and like the yeah. car sequence is great. Like, I love that. Like early on, like the the dialogue is so uh, sporadic. They're just like shouting at each other over the music, and it goes yeah. for a good while, yeah. and it's really engaging and like. <laughs> You, you get to just, like, sit in with them. And at one point, it. like, Suicide turns around and starts, like, beating one of the guys in the back, <laughs> even though he's driving. driving. Yeah. And, like, the girl next to him just, like, has to reach over and take hold of the wheel and everything. Yeah, and I, I thought that the um, uh, the studio sequence for that, like, the sequencing was 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 pretty fun, too. Like, the, the, the backdrop didn't look, like, all that fake, either. Like, the camera bumping was kind of fun, but, like, yeah, during that whole sequence, like... It what, in the car? yeah. I don't think that was a backdrop. I think yeah, I they probably. I think real. they either Honestly, they had a shit. car. Yeah, I think they were they either had the camera in a car next to them or they had the camera mounted on a gimbal. I don't think yeah. that that was that probably was not green 
second screen. I, I, almost, I, I almost would be surprised they got away with that legally, because like all the other sequences are look like like they were different people like driving in the car. I could be wrong about that, or like they they were called cutaways and stuff. So it doesn't look like a green screen in the eighties. You would be able to you'd be able yeah. to see yeah. the green screen behind them a yeah. lot. Yeah, that wasn't legal though, right? They like, it, it's that... a, it would have been a film production, dude. They would have had they would have had stuntmen. They would have had the street closed off. Uh-huh. You know. Yeah. There's yeah that that's that's just part of a film production. Interesting. Oh, back to the the Linnea Quigley character. Um, yeah, she's talking about how like her ideal way to die would be to like get pulled Eaten apart and bitten to death men. by like a bunch of old men, and that's exactly what happens to her. Like when the the zombies start coming up from the from the ground and what i love too about that is when she comes back as a zombie later there's not a mark on her nope <laughs> not a yeah. lot yeah she's just she's just gray and it looks like they've put like some some sort of like old person makeup like on her face like she looks yeah. a little shriveled she's got like wrinkly. the klingon like ridges and shit like on but her forehead but still the really yeah. bright vibrant red hair, red hair. Yeah. yeah, she's a great character. Yeah, absolutely excellent. Like all, all, all the characters. Yeah, ten out of ten. Like for me, I love, I love the, the how, how character driven it is, and they really get into it. And they actually got like actors who knew how to ham it up, and you know, like really well, had a magnetic you know, that, presence. That's the thing. Like zombie movies, I mean, horror movies in particular, but or horror movies in general, but zombie movies in particular is like the best zombie movies are always the ones that are primarily character driven. Mm-hmm. Like the Romero trilogy, yeah. Um, all of those are like comedic or not, comedic yeah. or not. Yeah, like the original uh, Night of the Living Dead and Dawn and Day are extremely character driven. I mean, even Twenty Eight Days. Like, Twenty Eight Days. Um, I had another one too. Um, Walking Dead. That was pretty character driven. <laughs> I mean, in the beginning, it was. I mean, honestly, when, it, yeah. when it was when it was good, you know, in the beginning, it was. They, what they do you mean that. when it was good? <laughs> what do you mean? Let's just dive into that. Let's, no, just Let's not. I, no, I please no. People say God. like season eight or nine of Walking Dead is really good. I'm not trying, to but I'm not it. exactly like yeah, I'm not putting too myself little, through yeah, all those late. crap yeah. seasons. Sorry. Not worth it. Yeah, the first Forget season with Frank Darabont was like probably the only thing that was even. Yeah, I. Yeah, I thought the first season was great, and I even liked the second season. Everybody th- talks about, like, the farm being so, so boring and, like, nothing happens, but I, actually, I was okay I with that. It, yeah. And then it started to go downhill from there, and I stopped watching, like, midway through season five. And I was, I hated it by that point. I was just trying to force myself to keep <laughs> watching through it. I'm like, no, I'm well, not doing this anymore. The thing, the thing, I think the thing that we're, oh, no, we're not, I'm not going to get into it. We, we're, we're talking about Return of the Living Dead. Um, so like, I could, I could talk about, uh, yeah, like uh, the beginning of Walking Dead and why it was good for a little while. But, um, yeah, I definitely fell out good. at the point of, uh, the infamous coral oh, scene. Oh, coral! <laughs> coral. Same. That is exactly what I dropped off to. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> coral! That's, that's Marky Mark and the happening energy yeah. for sure. 100%. Yeah. I lost so, my train of thought. Long story short, uh, the actors really lean into it. Like Yeah, yeah and, totally. And it works. I mean, everyone, like the, the writing... Uh, the effects, everything is, it's all, it all leans in. You know? Well, the acting in general is great. Like, uh, the, the old guy who shows the, the kid around on his first day, yeah. mm-hmm. um, you know, after the gas comes out, he's just hysterical. Yeah, the whole time. He's just the whole rest of <laughs> yeah. the movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's so funny. Like, he, his, uh, when he's telling Freddy about, uh, you know, like the event that inspired Night of the Living Dead. Like as he's telling that story, he's so animated about it. And he's like, "Do you want to see him? You know, the bodies." <laughs> <laughs> it's great too, because like like his whole uh, his whole gimmick when he's showing the kid around is like is like this like authority figure, and he's all like, "Yeah, I'm gonna show you around, pal." And you know, we're gonna. And you he's think that he's chummy, probably the guy. Yeah. Who, yeah, you think he's probably like the guy who owns the warehouse. And, and then, like, once, 
uh, they they go down and the, uh, they look at the the containers and he bumps the side of him. He's like, "Ah, oh, it's military technology. It's the best there is." Then it bursts. It just bops in. Yeah, it just bops the gas it. explodes. Amazing. Uh, and they get knocked. They get knocked out. And they're just like hit full force with this gas. And they do a great job of showing it when they do reawaken and they're stumbling around and they're all exhausted. And he goes, he's like, "We got who are we gonna call? Ah, oh, fuck!" And there's this great like back and forth. They're panicking. And when he sits down at the desk, like his character takes a full ninety degree. Turn, and I loved that. Like he's like panicking, and he's been like been this authority figure this whole time. He's trying to call all the shots, and then he sits down, and like after he's been gassed, and there's like a, a corpse like screaming in the back room and stuff. He like sits down, rolls his sleeves up, like like dabs his tongue, and like like cleans his hair, slicks his hair back a little bit, and, like a has a sip of coffee, <laughs> like yeah. just like takes like a full stop and pause so he can like talk to his manager. And from the rest of the time, he's just in the subordinate position, like, and uh, it's great. So uh, Bert, we've. Uh got a, a little bit of a problem down here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to say the least mm-hmm. um and it just becomes like a, a fucking igor character after that like just like following his manager around puppy dogging like it, it and, and just crying out in pain it's like he's great he's yeah. he's excellent he was in a uh, uh, actor's name was james karen i yeah. think that played him mm-hmm. and he was in a bunch i think like westerns and stuff in, I don't know, like, you know, 60s, that makes, 70s, stuff that like makes that. That makes good yeah. sense. Like, yeah. character acting in, like, John Wayne movies and um, stuff? I want to say, like, like, TV shows, possibly. Okay, I'm not yeah. 100%, but, like, he like was... Like, Paladin he, and shit. He was in, like, a decent amount of stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. That would that would makes good sense, because he he really came across, like, like a Western character actor. Yeah. Like, growing up watching a bunch of those, like, you can see the similarities with, like, the, the old coot, like, Indian fighter, or, like, the old town drunk and stuff. Like, he, he carries himself the same way. Exactly, yeah. 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 Yeah, and the um his his boss, the the owner, um that's Clue Gulliger, isn't it? Yes. He's yeah. like and he's like a, a pretty renowned B movie actor. I think he I think he was in a bunch of westerns and stuff too yeah. when he yeah. was really young. Yeah. Um yeah, they they both do a great job. And like the two of them and the uh the mortician uh are they have such like a good dynamic together, especially like Clue Gulliger and the mortician. Cause they're like old friends and the sequence where they have to take all of the disembodied pieces of the zombie. Oh, they're, over to they're, weasels. To, oh, they're yeah, rabid that, weasels. Yeah. Rabid weasels. Rabid weasels. <laughs> yeah. Trying to convince them to use the rabid weasels. <laughs> He threatens to bring him out to the parking lot and shoot him with his luger. Right, exactly. He's like, <laughs> yeah. "That's cruel. Like, you can't, you can't just burn animals alive. At least let me take him outside." He's <laughs> always so quick on the draw with his luger. Yeah, yeah just shoot him in the parking lot. Like, it's fine. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I um, I I love that. Like the the zombies in this movie just can't be killed either. Like, even when you dismember them, like, all of their their body parts still have a mind of their own. That's why they have to take the zombie to the incinerator is because even after they've chopped it all up, all of the pieces are still moving and everything. Um, I find it so much more horrifying than, the, like, classic totally. zombies. Because oh, yeah. you, Agreed. You, yeah. you can't do anything about it, <laughs> ultimately. Right, the only way to make them not be a threat is to dismember them and even then you still got to do something with the pieces that are squirming around and like you know? to top it all off that they're like semi-intelligent yeah like they're so much more of a threat than like well then in the because they're driven by desperation and then the yeah. fact that when you burn them the chemical goes up into the into the atmosphere and then creates like acid rain that then rains down on the cemeteries and reanimates all the other bodies like what are you supposed to do about that? And and even at the end, when the military just nukes the the city, then we see that the cycle is just repeated all over again. Yeah, like the burning works. bodies. Yeah, the, uh, they're just gonna. The, they just activate the, the apocalypse. The ending is so nihilistic. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like such. A, it makes it on such more like a more, more of a grand scale. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it, like it gets you. A... It gets you really well because like the the mood it kind of sets for you is just like ah zombies. Are, like you know we we know how they work. It's like oh I know these work kind of differently. That's sort of fun. It's like, whoa, oh shit. Like, this is actually going <laughs> south. Like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, and also, like, how in really most like that, that. not just 80s, just like every character is a stereotype to the T. Uh, and she plays a similar character that becomes possessed by, a, by a demon. Awesome. And it just like goes from there and it's. It goes off the rails. Real does quick. she dance naked on top of a coffin? <laughs> no, but she does put lipstick into her tit. Oh, okay. We'll just leave it so, at that. <laughs> all right. Nice. 
Yeah, I mean, after this movie, how could you not have a crush on her? Those leg warmers? Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if you guys don't have anything else, I guess we can get into ratings. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cleveland, why don't you start and we'll work our way around and finish with our guest last. Yeah, um, so I'm relatively, like like most out there, like I, I've been pretty burnt out on zombie films and like the concept in general. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll watch, watch the zombie movie with some friends. Uh, uh, neat. You know, cool. That sounds like fun. And uh, from the beginning of this film, I, I enjoyed the shit out of it. And I, I've been trying. I've been trying really hard, like uh, over the past few hours to just to, to break down or to find anything I didn't like about this movie. And I can't. It's a five out of five. Like I, I, I can't find anything I didn't like about this film. I, I and I'm trying to. I, I, I enjoyed the shit out of it. It's great. It's a great film. You know, I was trying to do the same thing, and I also can't. Like this is such a uh, refreshing take on the zombie genre. Refreshing is a weird word to use, considering that this movie did come out thirty years ago. Right. Um, Which is even more of a testament. Right, but like the fact that this is my first time seeing it all the way through and being so inundated with the oversaturation of the zombie genre and how stale it's become, this really was a breath of fresh air. And uh, yeah, I, I thought this film was great, front to back in every way. It does the perfect balance of of horror and comedy i think there's some legitimately horrifying existential concepts in it but it's also so witty and so clever and, and uh, rich with content and rich with content yeah, and, all it, killer, no and it looks great and the the score is great and the acting is great i can't find anything wrong with it either so it's going to be a five out of five for me as well yeah i mean it's an incredible movie man the the story and the writing is so witty and so clever the zombies are, like, the most threatening zombies of any zombie movie, in my opinion. They, well, yeah, they, if you can't kill them, what are you supposed yeah, to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the characters yeah. are incredible. Um, front to back, it's just funny and entertaining and conceptually really horrifying. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 as well. I think it's a really killer movie. It's one of my favorite zombie movies, personally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, when, whenever I rate stuff, I always feel like I have to put things on two different levels because I have like a personal level, which is how I feel about it. And then like the filmmaking aspect in which I would rate it. So like personally, it's a five out of five. Like I grew up watching this movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's definitely like a top 10 personal movie for me. We tend to go on personal ratings around yeah. here, you know, because like even if a film is not perfect from like a technical perspective it can still give you the feeling of a perfect film if and you can exactly. bring enjoyment out yeah. of a movie it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. exactly if it's dumb, so know? it's not we're we're not so. about like <laughs> and and there are plenty of and there are plenty of you know good movies where something about it technically is still a problem and it does you know it does nag at you a little bit so you know that it, it's mostly just about your enjoyment yeah. so if it's a perfect if if it if it's a perfect film for you that is more but than yeah, okay. feel free to exactly. finish that thought as well yeah sure yeah, yeah so like a definitely 5 out of 5 for me personally um, and then like on the filmmaking aspect aspect of it probably like a 4 out of 5 but just all things considered i mean you know it is cheap it is dumb uh, from all those those points uh, but just personally in terms of just like pure enjoyment 5 out of 5 Always. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's a unanimous five, and uh, that's another film joining the hallowed halls of our golden pods. Yeah, one of um, what four or five? Four or five, five now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so great. Yeah. What a what a fantastic film to get to talk about on the show. Thanks, John, for for uh, coming and joining us and and like bringing this you know this film to to the show because yeah, uh, yeah it's it's been something I've been meaning to watch for a long time, and this was a great excuse. And uh, I had a fantastic time with it. Most definitely. Um, yeah. I always love spreading the joy. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> the death and joy. The yeah. death and joy. <laughs> the two so often go hand in hand. Um, next week, uh, it's going to be Ben's pick, and we're talking about Cube, yeah. I believe. Ooh, uh, nice. Which is a film that I really enjoy, so I'm looking forward to, to talking about it's Cube. It's been a while since I've seen it. Uh, an indie, time, it an indie horror film classic, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, it's a date. You might even call it a meat cube. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> hell yeah. So tune in next week to uh, hear our thoughts on Cube. We can't close out without mentioning our sponsor, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got Okay, so uh, this week uh, we were sponsored by... Bob, uh, Robert and, and Bob Boberson's uh, uh, 
military grade, better than military grade zombie containers. <laughs> Are you worried about bumping your zombie container and getting gas and shit all over the place? Worry no longer. These these zombie containers are are proof uh, being slapped. They they will not they will not break. Uh, uh, guaranteed. So fear no longer about uh, miscellaneous outbreaks in uh, warehouses in Tennessee. No more problems. Bob Robertson, Bob and Boberson. Uh, there are things that go bump in the night. Our containers don't. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if you like the show, uh, do the thing and leave us a five star rating on uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever else you get your podcasts. Leave us a nice review as well. What's your favorite zombie movie? Uh, you can engage with us on Twitter at Pod People Pod. Uh, and tell us what you think about Return of the Living Dead, and is it better than The Walking Dead? If you say no, I'm gonna disagree with you. Yeah, let's uh, let's start a flame war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's do it. Um, yeah, you can uh, also follow us on Letterboxd at letterboxd.com slash podpeoplepod for a list of all the films we've talked about on the show with our average ratings links to the corresponding episodes and you can see what other uh films are in our hallowed halls of golden pods like we've been plugging for the last couple of weeks you can uh get our game that we've been working on for the last two years the prologue to it stares back it stares right. back six levels three plus hours of content and that is available for free if you uh, go to our website at lightarcstudio.com, join our Discord, and it will send you a link to download the game. Yeah, and, and if you can't remember all that shit, just Google It Stares Back. Our ESO is really good, so just Google it. It Stares Back. You'll find it. Whatever it is. You know, it's so good, we don't have to have to remember what it's called. It's that good. Just Google It Stares Back. Hopefully we'll be on we'll be on Steam or somewhere soon. Relatively soon. Absolutely, yeah. So it'll be a little bit easier to get a hold of the game. But uh, you can also follow uh, our LightArc account on Twitter at LightArc Studio. You know uh, it. Cleveland tweets for that. Yes, sir. Um, you can follow me, my personal Twitter, at Mr. Van Awesome, if you're so inclined. Give me some good zombie recommend- recommendations. I'm at Mr. Sheets on Twitter. Absolutely. And actually, I'm at, uh, at Wow That's Heavy on Instagram. Nice. All right, an Instagram yeah. plug. None yeah. of us have Instagrams. Yeah. This is our first Instagram plug. That's my only social media, so deal with it. All right, hell yeah. Um, well, John, thank you again for joining us. This was a great time. Um, I loved watching this movie, and I love talking about it with you guys. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah absolutely. Thanks yeah, for Yeah, hopefully, me. yeah, we'll, we'd love to have you back again sometime. Um, so stay tuned. Next week, Cube! Yeah. Uh, and until next time... Keep your zombies contained, I guess. Don't send more paramedics. (laughs) Don't send more (laughs) paramedics! (laughs)